even more together. So yeah, it's been a fun journey watching branding go up. Like I've known Brandon since he was like super young. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, man, it's just been, a, it's been a journey of just like partnering with God. You know, it's like you have one thing, which is like just ministry and then you have like work and most people separate it because yeah. partnering with God with a skill set and being used is way different than like praying for a miracle. Cause that's, pretty much all you do is pray and God did everything else in business. It's a partnership of him helping refine, build skill sets and a mindset. Mm -hmm. And that's way different and way crazier and more stewardship. And so it's been awesome going from the instant gratification side of Christianity to the actual stewardship and partnering with God aspect inside of business, which has been fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Like I think that's one of the biggest struggles like for me personally of like how, like aligning the spiritual aspect with like the business aspect and it's just been like like such a pull and push right between like obviously like what i believe like sometimes the father telling me like spend more time in prayer like spend more time in my word right and then on the other side being like oh but i gotta like like make more money and i gotta like you know go out there and whatnot right so like how how has it been for you to like mix both of those so like seamlessly right or like, like part of Mm-hmm. Yeah, so a lot of people they say that a rich person focuses on his assets and the and like and the things that he has and a wealthy person focuses on his legacy. Mm-hmm. And what I found is that you can actually set it up in a way that's a little bit more strategic where every business person and every like spiritual person we're going to go out there and do the same actions which is like you know generate leads get people to buy things, follow up with them, do all the same things. Yet, if your vision is to make them like, oh, I need to make money and hit this goal, then all of a sudden it becomes just about the money. It becomes super difficult and like, seems like, am I doing the right thing? Like, shouldn't I be dreaming of something bigger? But when I dream of something bigger, I don't sell anyone and then I can't live and then it's like difficult. And I'm like, well, how can I focus on the thing on the other side of the money Mm -hmm. that makes me run through the money even faster meaning like the goal of the money to get to that other side. So when I'm talking about transforming the, the houses, like the men's and the homes, that's the difference between a goal and a why. Money is a goal. It's good, but it won't motivate you to like run through a brick wall because it's, I always tell this thing, actually at our goal setting workshop, the difference between the goal and the why is that a goal, if you put a two by four, you know, like a piece of wood, like a two by four yeah. on the ground, a hundred yards and you walk on it. And I said, Hey man, like if you can walk on this two by four, a hundred yards, I'll give you 500 bucks. Anyone in the world would do that because that's a money goal. Like they're like, if I do this, I'm going to get 500 bucks because there's no risk. Now all of a sudden, if I were to say, I put the same two by four. So that means it's the same activity, a hundred stories up between two buildings, a hundred yards across. And it's a hundred stories down for 500 bucks. Nobody would do it. And, and smart people wouldn't even do it for $50 million because they're like, well, the chance of dying is so freaking high. It's not worth the activity. But if I were to say the family member you love the most is in a burning building on the other side of uh, this two by four, and the only way to give them is to get to the other side, now they would rather risk their life and die than allow their family members to die on the other side, knowing that they never tried. And that's the difference between a goal and a why. And so when I set up the strategic way in the business, it's like the best way I believe and we help the guys set up the business is how can I make it where Every dollar I make means that it actually did something and I can focus on something on the other side of the dollar, which is Mm. for me, the man on the other side of the dollar. And so that I can easily like work hard, make the money because the actions are the same, Mm -hmm. except for the intention is different. And it keeps me like pure and in alignment Mm -hmm. and make, making me feel like I'm building the legacy rather than the riches. Mm -hmm. Cause it's fine to be rich. Again, the actions are the same. So someone who, focus some money may make more money than the guy who that wants to help people mm-hmm. right and he might help more people fo- focusing on money than the guy who is actually wants to help people I because know. he's doing the Such action paradox, right? our intention you know what i mean so i i've i've not necessarily struggled with that a lot but i've struggled mm-hmm. after i've made a lot of money to be like why continue to just like make more of it mm-hmm. for no reason mm-hmm. and that's where i was like well I probably should have a bigger reason to make money than just to make money. Mm-hmm. Like there has to be some, like I have to tie it to something. So I have mm-hmm. a bigger motivation. So I'd say that's a big piece of it. I that way that. you feel like you're partnering with God. Cause people feel like the only way they can partner with God is if they like 
you know, yeah, become a sabotage their business and go like pray for someone or something. Yeah. And I'm like, now there's something, there's something bigger to this whole picture that's really mm-hmm. difficult to see. Look at Joseph, dude. And like the dude would have, ne- how, how do you think that that's going to all work out? Like it's sold into slavery and then I'm a slave forever. And then like I go to jail and oh, then man. I'm still faithful to God through the jail. And all of that was orchestrated for a bigger purpose. Yes. And, you know, I think a lot of Christians, like I wouldn't look at like being in jail doesn't seem like God's on your side, no matter right. what, right. especially exactly. when you're in there for doing nothing wrong. Exactly. So if sitting, if, I think us as Christians, if we're neglecting the business, it's like, what, what's it put in our plate? Like God gave people talents and said, multiply them. And mm-hmm. they weren't like, oh my gosh, like I feel so bad that like, I didn't pray as much today because I'm multiplying these talents, but God told me to multiply these talents. But what's the point? Because it's just money. Like, yes. you know what I mean? Like it yes. was what was put on their plate and they did, they were faithful with what they had. So yeah. Long story, oh, but. No, 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 no. I love it, bro. No, thanks for sharing that. Um, let me make sure that this is almost ready. I hope the, the live stream works. I know that zoom has been kind of ridiculous. I know. Sometimes. Definitely. Yeah. I've had a couple of trolls, but give me a sec. Yeah. No, Yeah, perfect. Okay, man. Um, yeah, the last question before you and I uh, jump in live, but um, I know you mentioned that, you know, tying like the reason of why making more money, right? Yep. You know, where, where, where you are now. What's your grandeur vision, um, you know, that, that God's put in your heart? I know you just went through like vision and whatnot, so it's probably pretty Yeah, fresh. yeah. Our, our big thing has yeah, always man. been through the, the example that we're creating through the men that I'd be able to consult every major world leader on the way that they would inject the culture into their country. Mm. So it's going to like the top like leaders of the world and changing yeah. from the top down. I love it. Totally. And I'm doing it by proving like ourselves and what we do now and then being able to go there. And I don't know, it's just always been like something I've wanted since I was maybe like 18, 19. Mm-hmm. And it's just always been like the, It'd be like Gary Vee trying to buy the Jets. Like yeah. That's his thing. Yeah. Um, it kind of sounds like I make him like look bad when I say that, but his is, his is equally cool because it's motivating him. I'm sure he has other big things that he wants to do. Yeah. I wish I had something I wanted that bad, like buying the Jets. I need to find that like, right. thing that I want. Yeah, like, 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 like a tangible thing or whatever, right? <laughs> but in the goal setting workshop, one of the big thing we talked about is focus increases desire. In health, we always like try to get people not – to try to eliminate desserts we always try to get them to find other things that they can eat because if they focus on like don't eat dessert they're going to sabotage themselves and eat the dessert because by focusing on it no matter what you're going to increase desire and so a lot of times like people just don't know they don't have any desire because they haven't focused on anything long enough to create desire yeah you're like you don't like cars then you start hanging out with people that like cars and then you start looking at cars and then you're like dude i need to get a car Right. Awesome. Exactly. Exactly. Attention where attention, you know, goes, energy flows. Right. And so ultimately yep. that's where it totally. is. And dude, it's, it's so crazy. Just God's timing in like through it all, because like this past week has probably been like the most transformational, most profound time of my life. And I'll just tell you like two minutes and then we'll go live, but it, but it's relevant because it's like, anyways, um, so this was like this past Tuesday and I've been meditating a lot ever since like my anxiety hit me like in 2018. And I don't know if you know my story, but basically God delivered me from that. Like after like a three day fast and kind of like gave me his spirit, like a new level really. And I was just like rid of that. But anyway, I, I kept with the meditation. I kept with the meditation and new things have been happening just like that. I wasn't even looking for, and they just started happening out of, just the practice and spending more time with God, more, more time with, with my eyes closed. And anyways, long story short, bro, I went into this insane, like three hour trance where I left my body, like, and God just like was there with the Holy spirit. And like, I started getting all these different, like downloads and visions and different things, right. Like what I was supposed to do in the future. And like 2020 is like the first year that I'll be doing like my first live event, like my, like a small intimate kind of like mastermind, but like live event. And I've been battling so hard of like, how can I integrate the spiritual element 
while also like bringing obviously like the highest level of business like without losing that because like spiritual community man it's like oh, don't even get me started right like a lot there that could could be different right but also going too much on the materialistic and business and money right and like you're one of those few dudes that i admire so much because you have like the like that right mix that like i see it i'm like yes that's it like that is good right and funny in this like crazy trance meditation whatever you want to call it um one of the big things that was given to me was like the new name of like the group and the movement that i'll be kind of going through um in 2020 and it's actually the billion dollar kingdom <laughs> nice that's cool man and i thought of you know i was like man like that's so funny that like it's that and like a, a week before that I, I i told you i had like a dream with like you and amanda and like i guess what what possibly could have been like you're a kid too and we're sitting in some sort of like event and anyways man like a lot of just crazy timings crazy synchronicities and stuff like that so yeah really excited for this but know that whether consciously or subconsciously you've been like influencing like some of the deepest parts of me right of like now even you know sharing that with you so yeah i'm i'm excited to, to see how god's going to use us in the future and uh, yeah, yeah the, the event's a good way to launch it that's what i did with the brotherhood I had a health company and I was like, this is what I want to do is the brotherhood. And I, I want to make a bigger transformation. I'm already doing it when I'm coaching them, but I, they don't yes. know it in the messaging. And yes. I said, cool, I'll throw a live event. Like obviously it was more dramatic than that, but throw a live event. That's where we'll inject this new message and then they'll go home and everyone will understand it. And we'll get like a year, 10 years worth of content into a few days into their brain. Cause you think like the average person probably watched your content like 10 seconds at a time. Right. So they're sitting in a room for nine hours listening for three days or two days. Right. That's a lot of time, a lot of messages. So that was how we launched the brotherhood. And when it's done correctly, yeah, our, for, our very first live event did like 240 or $250,000 in sales, not including Beautiful. the tickets. Oh, yeah. perfect. Yeah. With just all, all the back end, like coaching. Yeah. Yep. And I pitched the very first talk. Yeah, the very first oh, talk really? I pitched. Yeah, you didn't even was, wait to the second day or third day or whatever. Like you just well, it was two day event, so I oh, always today. advise on a two day event to pitch right off the start, or right before lunch on the first day. And then you just set a deadline of like, hey, all your apps should be in by blank, and then a team. Will yeah, and for your if you're not used to telling people to run to the back of the room and swipe a credit card, apps application is like totally the way to go. It's a lot more like you can. You can, if you mess it up, it's very easy to fix it, you know? Right. Whereas if you mess yeah. up a table rush, it's a little bit more like, you know, it's a little bit harder yeah. to fix. Yeah. The, this first event, I was thinking like small though, like 15, 20 people taught, like, like more mastermind kind of oriented because I'll, I'll be doing like, you know, meditation sessions, breath work, et cetera, mixed with like the business stuff. But, why? but yeah. Why do it? Why do it small though? Um, I don't know. I, I think it's, uh, I don't know if it's, Cause I thought the same yeah. thing. I told my wife I wanted like 15, 20 people cause I knew I could do it. And huh, she said, no, let's go for a hundred. And we had 81 paying attendees. And then we had a few people from like the sponsorships and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Speakers that attended and stuff like that. So I thought 15, 20, 25 people as well. Cause I knew I could do it on my own. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Maybe that's why I'm going for that. And I thought of pricing it at like 3k per ticket versus going like you said like a hundred or something and then doing like i don't know 200 three i like i don't know it's up to you either way yeah. like both of them are really good but yeah i just wouldn't limit yourself and yeah make sure you have that back end offer as well yes definitely awesome yeah, if you have a 3k event have the back end offer yes. pitch at every event pitch yes. something at every single event you ever do yes that's the that's the idea but yeah i'm, I'm excited for all of that because it was just kind of like this long search right for the past like three years of like incorporating it in the one-on-one -on -one coaching clients and stuff like that but like knowing that mindset is most of the work but it's so hard because you gotta give people what they want know what they need so it's like it's kind of like playing a little bit with like right like as you know of like what you said on the front end and like the type of stories that you share versus what the ones that you know they'll need but you can't share that until you get their buy-in fully yeah yeah they only they won't <laughs> uh, they won't value it yeah exactly exactly so we're going live inside the seven figure group yes cool um do you think that when we go live honey that you can like 
mute your mute your computer but go like like it real quick or whatever and let, let me know like if there's anything going on in there cool you'll see it pop up probably is she in the group she's on my she'll be on my facebook oh, okay cool i just want to make sure because i don't want to mess around with it because then if it the sound pops up on you know and it starts like interrupting us i'll just have amanda pull it up real quick while and just like check it every once in a while to see what's going on okay awesome man any any suggestions for the for the title something that gives them what they want <laughs> exactly. not what they need i know um, yeah, I, I, you know, you know your people a little bit better than me, so just like something that would hook them in. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I went from I literally went from a broke carpet cleaner making twelve hundred bucks a month four years ago. Yeah, just, that, that works. you know, if it's a click funnels, if a lot of people in uh, click funnels or use click funnels, then like I spoke at Funnel Hacking Live this year um, from being a freaking carpet cleaner. Like that was only three years. Dude, difference that, that was fast three, man. three years ago cleaning my last carpet to funnel hacking live it's kind of ridiculous it is kind of ridiculous and awesome yep. we serve an awesome god love it bro okay cool yeah i'm, I'm, I'm gonna go for that one uh, from here, let me write it down from you said broken fat you want me to put that yeah uh yeah you could just say broke carpet cleaner broke carpet cleaner yeah yeah to a lot of coaches right i think coaches yeah. in a group name. yeah yeah i mean you could tell say selling a, over a million dollars of coaching services mm -hmm. perfect and that way it appeals to them yeah amazing All right, let's do it. Cool. All right. What is going on, everybody? Andres Martinez here, and I'm so excited, so freaking excited to have my brother, Nicholas Bayerly and he will be sharing some awesome stories and how he went from bro carpet cleaner to being in click funnels like talking in front of like five thousand people like over seven figures brother welcome to the tribe thanks man i really appreciate it and i'm not one of those guys that like mixes up the timeline literally just four years ago i was cleaning carpets and what's interesting as well though is that i had multiple moments that changed my life forever like in an instant i call defining moments right there's two different types of moments in the world and people can use this and in, in sales as well there's inconsequential moments those moments are the moments that don't really change anything it'd be like doing your laundry that's a moment but did it really shape your life forever and then there's those like defining moments those ones where you're like man if that didn't happen if i didn't meet that person or, or if i didn't have that experience life would never be the same and i had multiple of those defining moments two that shifted me one for the negative one for the positive and my goal is it's always that for the people watching or whether it's the replay or actually live, which let us know down below in the comments mm -hmm. is that we had a defining moment here. So have that expectation. Last thing real quick. I went to my very first live event when I was 20 years old, business live event at least. And I was so stupid. I was so dumb mm -hmm. that I actually showed up to the live event thinking that it was actually something special and that people actually told the truth and the stuff was going to work for me. And so many times we get on these Facebook lives and these trainings and we just, we click on, we click off, we don't take notes, we don't pay attention because there's so much out there that we're like, ah, those didn't transform my life. So how is this going to transform my life? I showed up expectant. The speaker told me, if you follow what I do, you'll make $12,547 or that's how much you'll sell. I followed it to a T 30 days later, my first 30 days in business, I did $12,547 dollars in sales while everyone else was like i've already heard this before i just was like whoa really it if i do this it'll work and i just had that childlike mm. ability to just go like man i believe you i took action and if you do that on this facebook live we create some transformations and defining moments together yeah no that's awesome that 
thank you so much for like pre-framing it with that because it's so true it's like to the degree that you appreciate things and you take them in with like you know with without all the programming it's to the degree that you will like implement and like actually transform your life with information so yeah man thank you so much for being here and so yeah i love to kind of dive in into that kind of you know story a little bit of like man like how did you get the motivation how did you end up going from there to like starting to you know get that level of action that level of commitment to start changing your life from being like a bro carpet cleaner man like i've worked in construction a lot but like it's not easy to be in that place like tell me what that was like man. at least a lot of people in construction get paid really well right carpet cleaning like <laughs> I, I i think i did the math i didn't get paid to drive and so i got paid about like eight six to eight dollars an hour if Ooh. i really looked at it because i got paid commission Ooh. but that's listening right now no one's in a facebook group listening to a facebook live no matter what time it is unless you already have motivation mm. something like that drives you it's just like getting that clarity like what's the next step what's the plan i'm sure that if i gave you a step-by-step -step game plan mm. it, all, everyone would be like oh i would take action on it if i knew what to do mm. just a lot of times we don't know if the actions that we're taking are actually getting us closer to our goal so that was really difficult for me as well i would say that i was always motivated but you'll see from my story that the tendencies that I had in the life that I was living mm -hmm. did not show that I was motivated. I grew up in a regular middle-class home in San Diego here. My family actually broke up. My mom and my dad broke up and split up when I was four. I didn't know until second grade that they actually were never married. I thought they got divorced, but I guess they were never married. So they broke up apparently. Mm -hmm. And that caused a lot of anxiety with me. Like my mom didn't like my dad. Wow. My dad didn't really like my mom. And, and it, so at seven years old, I ended up writing my first suicide letter because I just thought, why am I here if I'm causing so much frustration? I'm always going from one home to the next. I was put in daycare from zero to two. I was put in preschool from two to four. And then I was dropped off at school every single day at 6.30 a.m. and picked up at 5.30, 5, 6 o'clock at night every single day. So I was stuck at school all the time, hated school, got ma mass anxiety. And it got to the point where you know, my dad was my greatest mentor. I just had all these different pressures in life. Third grade, I struggled with massive anxiety. I could hardly even go to school. I struggled with such bad stomach aches, but consciously I had no clue what was going on. Oh, wow. So there's nothing grooming me for this like level of success. Yes. My dad owned a carpet cleaning company though. And he taught me a really great lesson, which is there's always, if you get value, it, it'll be exchanged for dollars. So if you have a lawnmower and a weed whacker, you'll never grow, go broke. So at 10, 11, 12 years old, I had 3000 plus dollars in savings from running a, a lawn mowing and lawn care business that I learned from my dad, but I didn't have a vision, right? I had no reason to go out there and make more money. I had more savings than any other kid. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point where I wanted to be a professional athlete. That's what I wanted to do. So I told my dad to get his approval. I don't know for the other people out there who's ever wanted their dad's approval before, but when I was skateboarding, motocross, anything I was doing, I would literally in the back of my head, just picture my dad watching me and hoping that maybe he would just get a glimpse of it and he'd be proud of me. Wow. That's always what I thought about when I did things to the point where I literally like would fly off the bike, like crash, do things because I would just push myself so hard to try to get that attention. So at 13 years old, I remember trying to get that attention from my dad and said, Dad, I want to be the best motocross racer in the world. And this is my first defining moment right here. Wow. I told my dad, I remember leaving my bedroom. My dad was walking through the hall. I followed him through the kitchen, three stairs down into the garage and out the back of the garage on the back patio. And I said, Dad, I want to be the best motocross racer in the world. I'm going to get a tutor. And I just thought, this is when my dad's going to go, finally, like, you're the son that I've always been looking for. Like, we're going to do this together. And he turned around and gave me the exact opposite response that I ever thought he would ever give me in my life. And he said, you'll never be the best. And I just, like, was crushed, man. It just killed me. And so I, I spent the next couple of years, I didn't talk to my dad for about three and a half years. I gained 60 pounds throughout high school. I graduated the 1.8 GPA. I had a 3.4 before then. I graduated with 1.8 GPA and I literally gave up on everything in life, everything in life at that point. And that was the defining moment that like shifted my life for the negative. Wow. Wow, man. Like that's crazy. That moment where you're like just hoping to hear what, what you've been wanting to, you know, imagining and it's just like, wow, like, but, but 
amazing too that it happened the way it had to happen right so like it, it would, and, and right? think of the equivalent like maybe someone's gotten on a sales call before and you were so excited to grow your business mm -hmm. and you got punched in the face and it didn't go through or someone rejected you your best friend rejected you because i had the same type of rejection happen in life and i believe that if i didn't go that through that rejection when i was younger and overcome it then i would have just went through that same depression and all these problems later in life because I have a quote for everyone to write down, which is pressure doesn't create weakness. It only exposes it. Mm, so like in, the, in the ceilings of most event rooms, there's pipes where like air and pressure travels. And if you were to turn up the pressure through the pipes in the ceilings and it bursts, the whole thing doesn't burst. It only will burst in the weakest point of the pipe. Yet ask, in that pipe, was that weak spot already there? Mm -hmm. Yes. But the pressure as it went up exposed the weakest part of the pipe. I started realizing in my that as the pressure went up and something triggered me or a problem happened, I started realizing that that weakness was already there. The pressure exposed it. Now I can actually deal with it and make it stronger. Oh man, that, that's gold. Guys, then, so. write that down. That was, that was gold because that's like uh, one of those master keys of life, right? Where like you can kind of like, use that almost as a, as a thermometer, you know, to see like where is that pressure being applied that exposes it when it's already in you for you to now go ahead and deal with it. I love yep. that. And then, and then I went on from there, man, and I, uh, a kid brought fruit to school and he had a meal plan from his trainer and I just thought I was 60 pounds overweight and I was like, man, this kid's got it. He's got a plan. All of a sudden, I had the motivation because I was always a motivated kid, but I didn't know how to change my health. All of a sudden, I had a plan, and I was like, boom. I went out there, lost 60 pounds in six months. That gave me the confidence to reconnect with my father. That gave me the confidence to approach my now wife of almost eight years with my son on the way. And I get married, and I have these two dimensions of the three-dimensional businessman that we talk about. I have my health, and I have my wife. I'm like, dude, this is amazing. I had no job, no income. I'm like, man, I've done everything else so easily. This should be easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into business on the mission field. I went to Bulgaria, Turkey, Greece, France, Scotland, wow. London, South Africa, Mozambique, Africa. I went into places in Mozambique, Africa that had never seen a white person before. First time was with me and my friends. Wow. And I'm serving the poor. And I just thought, there's so many people that can't afford to go serve the poor. I'm going to business and then I'll fund all these people to go serve the poor because it doesn't take talent to love people. It takes a heart to love people. Yes. So I go into business, dude. And for three years, I never could break over $3,000 in a month. All my friends like thought that I was off my rocker. They all kind of just left me and thought that I did the wrong thing with my life. Nothing was working for me. And it got to the point where I started believing it as well. I crashed and burned in my first wow. business after getting married. That's when I went into carpet clean two and a half years to just like try to pay off debt that I had accumulated. And I got into this mindset for the people listening. If you're even listening to this Facebook live, I got into the mindset where if there was a free event, a networking event, but there you even had to pay for parking. I would either drive away or I'd go home. Like I'd drive to where I could get free park or I'd drive all the way back home because I thought that if I saved the 10, 15, 20, $30 in parking, that that more valuable than the connections and education that I can get inside the event because I'd been so hurt that I started off in business. I went to the events. I did all the right things and I still crashed and burned. So I thought, well, maybe the way is to just try to do it all on my own, stop learning and getting educated. And it wasn't until I started to invest myself again that I had the major transformation in my life. Another defining moment when I got my first mastermind, got around super high level people that believed in me got around the education that I needed, the accountability that I needed. I went out there in 2016, went from never doing $3,000 in a month. This wasn't long ago. I cleaned my last carpet 2016 May. That wow. same month was the first month I did over 3K in a month. And I booked out over 20K after my very first session at a mastermind. I had been in that mastermind for six months, got no value from it, mm -hmm. only because I didn't show up. We had no in-person events yet. That very, it only came with one in-person event. That in-person event was such a defining moment for me. And the reason I host events and masterminds and ends only community is because when I was alone, didn't have the accountability, the education, the contextual knowledge, the connections, that support group, the environment that you can adapt to, I worked for two and a half years. I got inside of that, did 20K, right? Booked it out that, that month, left carpet cleaning, and we've had a not profitable month in the business since that month. 
wow. we've ran with that and have not had a not profitable month since. And obviously it's evolved into the, the brotherhood. Now we're reaching hundreds of thousands of men every single month, transforming their life and creating what I call three-dimensional businessman. I failed in those three areas of health, wealth, relationships, how we create success without sacrifice for these guys where they can actually prosper in all three and actually prosper more in business because of the foundation that they have in their personal life. Amazing. Oh man, I love it so much. You're like blessing my soul <laughs> with those like, you know, like golden nuggets you're, you're dropping there and, and, and just hearing your story because it's not easy to, you know, be able to go through this like rough times and, and then just like, I know that Russell Brunson quoted you on this and it stuck with me too of like, your mess becomes your message, right? Because it's so true. And you're such a great testimony of like failing in those three areas, like you said, now like rising bigger than ever. And now you're like transforming men that are like in those deep, like dark places, man. And like, I've been in my own time, my own, t you know, like tough times. And man, it's like such a blessing to have someone like you to like guide them forward. And there might be some people out there right now thinking maybe it's like the skill sets, right? Maybe Nicholas just knows right. how to sell and right. speak and do all these things. Yeah. Know that just a few years ago, like I, I remember um, I, I was first getting into business again with the carpet cleaning business. Mm -hmm. And my mentor is a Navy SEAL and did stuff in Hollywood and stuff like that. Nice. And he's for since I was 18 years old. Now I'm in my low twenties before I had my big breakthrough. I remember him saying, if you guys make it in business, he told my wife, it's definitely not going to be because of Nicholas. Like it has to be because of Amanda because <laughs> she's cute. She's talented. I didn't know how to speak in front of a camera. I thought I was allergic to the camera. I couldn't breathe on camera for some reason. You just like tense up. You'd be like, <laughs> dude, I could hear my own breath. I'd be like, Hey guys, this is Nicholas barely. And I breathe and I'd be like, why can I hear myself breathe? I would distract myself with my own breath and I couldn't get the sentences out. I rented a studio wow. to do three videos for three minutes each. And it took me eight hours of just doing one sentence at a time. And we had to clip them all together. I had no clue. I couldn't speak in front of people. The first time I got on stage, wow. I ended up just crying. Like the weirdest thing. I started telling my story and I started crying in front of everyone. I couldn't stop crying. I had to have my wife finish the talk. I talk about walking off the stage. Like that's, that's what they call the walk of shame is when you get up on stage and cry, you can't get your message out. It was really difficult. So I didn't know how to sell. I didn't know how to speak. I didn't know how to communicate and I didn't have the strengths to go out there and build a business. It was super difficult. Wow. So that is definitely not an excuse of not having the skill. Like, cause I know that's a big one. People are like, well, like, you know, but Nicholas was already, already had a business already probably knew how to speak already probably knew how to do this. And you're like, nope, Dude, and nope, I didn't nope. have a following. Like I, I had my friends used to get friend requests on Facebook and I used to be so jealous. I used to think, how do you get friend requests on Facebook? Like I don't get any friend requests on Facebook <laughs> back in the day. I, I, I was like, how do you guys do this? They, it seemed like all my friends had this cool life that people were attracted to. I would try to post and nobody freaking cared. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's a way like, if, if you're not super talented at speaking and communicating and selling, like it's okay. You don't need to be that. It's not a qualification. You can gain a skill set. You can follow it. You don't need a huge following. That's why I love selling high ticket, create yes. a bigger transformation for people. You don't need a lot of people, right? If you sell homes and you have a hundred people in your network and you sell a hundred homes, you're going to be in great shape, you know, especially if they go out there and duplicate themselves and buy more stuff from you. Like, it doesn't take that. And one of the best ways to do it is through being able to go out there and get your message out there through coaching and consulting, whether you have a community mm -hmm. and you're like me, a reporter, I bring in experts, the best experts for my guys, or if you're the guru, maybe you've done something before, like I did with my health business where I lost 60 pounds and then I helped other men do the same thing. No matter which one it is, find that vehicle, sell the high ticket and go out there and build that skill set where you get your message out there. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing, man. Yeah, I'd love for you if you can kind of dive in into like, what are you doing now? And, and how are you kind of architecting your business and also your lifestyle, right? Because I know that there's the people that, sure, they're making money, but man, they're neglecting their marriage. They don't go on dates with their wives. They, they you know, their health is just like barely kind of scraping by. And so like, that is not what I believe. I do believe that the modern man is able to have it all, just like you say in your book. And that's something that I want you to like, you know, share it with, with people that don't believe it's possible, right? Totally. I was trying to find this framework when I first actually went into coaching men in their health at first. I remember getting on the first call with them and I would ask them, what, what would you say your priorities in life are right now? If you give me like your top three mm -hmm. and all of them really struggled 
answer to it. And I told them, Hey, just, just give me your best answer. Cause no one like gets it right. So be like, you know, like business is a really big deal to me making money providing and, you know, and then they go to like, they probably should talk about health cause they're talking to me. So they start talking about, you know, going to the gym's really important. I'd be like, Oh, okay. And, and your family and your and your wife or your relationship they're like oh yeah obviously like that's like the top priority i was just saying like the other ones i'm like no not obviously like if it's not set into a priority and put into a calendar it's probably not going to get done and so right off the bat we started discovering that after i coached 100 men one-on-one in the health company i i realized and i didn't know these were the three core markets like i didn't have all these coaches and consultants to help me out i didn't have a great facebook live like this three core areas to every man's life. How to create a three-dimensional business man. Health, relationships, and wealth. And health, there's there's straight up just mental, physical, spiritual, emotional. Those are the four quadrants of health. Relationships, you have your intimate relationship. You have your family relationships. You have people that are like family to you. Mm -hmm. And then you have your network, the people that are out there like, you know, that know who you are and you're connecting with and you're, that you're serving. And inside of your business, you have making money, growing money, keeping money. Like those are the three core aspects of it. And what's that mission and vision that you're getting out there into the world? And so one of the first things that we do and that I do personally to be, make sure that I'm being that three-dimensional businessman, and I break this down in like, you know, for me, just te- facts tell, stories sell. Like I yes. love telling stories that the actual facts are in my book, Modern Day Businessman, that's on Amazon. That's yeah. like for Go cost, like ten dollars and eighty cents. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna drop your uh, your your book. Cool. One on their, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like if they want like the actual details, I don't want to bore yeah. everyone like exactly all the step by step. But one of the, one of the big things I do is I take my things in health first. I I empty my calendar. It's almost twenty twenty. Go out there, empty your calendar. Also, I have a free goal setting guide. If people want that, we can drop it down below. Yeah, I love Just that. for people that comment below, comment below goal or something, and we'll send it to you. It's free. And while, while it's like right here at the new year, start thinking, okay, if I stripped my calendar and I actually took like, what are the things in my health? What are my priorities? And then you put it in your calendar first. Notice priorities aren't the amount of time, mm-hmm. right? Or else sleep would sleep and work would be like one and two. And no one would say that sleep and work are more important than their family or if it can other, right? Or else they get slapped in the face. Right. So it's not the time, it's order of importance. Push comes to shove, what comes first? Mm-hmm. So I'd go ahead and put the health first because that's going to fuel you. And I'm just giving the answers now, but that's going to fuel you in your relationship, fuel you in your business, and it's going to help you show up very powerfully. Or plugging in relationship stuff. What are the areas out of those areas I talked about that need the most attention? Make sure they're plugged into the calendar and then plug in the biz stuff as well. Because what I found is that most people want to focus on those three areas, yet it's these other things that come up. They get a Facebook notification. Someone else, and they need their help. And all of a sudden, they get derailed from the things that they have because if they don't have their priorities and they don't set a boundary around it, all of a sudden, when other have urgency, they just drop their stuff to help to go do other things because that person has urgency. That person knows what they want. So a person that knows what they want will always have people come around and support them. Mm-hmm. But if we don't know what we want, we'll always be just getting distracted by other things yes. that are more urgent. So those are the ways that I personally make it very simple. I'm not like, oh, it needs to be all perfect and I have a million things on my to-do list. I'm like, okay, health, me, relationships, close people, business. Who am I impacting? How am I getting my vision out there? How am I moving the needle on the every day, right? I'm not like getting distracted with all these different friends and all these things. Those come next after those top three priorities. So I have a great foundation to be able to go out and live the freedom and the life that I have now, right? Does that make sense? That makes sense, man. Yeah, just keeping it simple. And I, I love that wisdom is one of those things that like, it sounds simple, right? It's one of those like seemingly simple things, you know, simple knowledge that kind of comes in, but to decode it into like the practicality, like that's really where like the, the wisdom and the experience can emerge, right? And we might as well do this stuff really well for everyone that's listening. You're already doing this stuff. If you have a job, you're still being eight to 10 hours a day. It's just not producing as much as you would like to. It's not getting something out there into the world that you care about. If you, Every single day, are people breathing? Are people drinking something? Are they eating something? Are they sleeping? Are they moving? Out of the health side, moving might be the only thing they're not doing. 
mm-hmm. but they're doing all these other things that incorporate that make up 80% of our health, maybe 90% yes. breath, hydration, sleep, nutrition. You're all, we're already doing these things. So why don't we just do them right? They, they take the same amount of time to eat ice cream as it takes to eat something healthy, right? People are, are already doing these things in relationships. Like you, do you want to outsource your relationship? Like for, I have a wife. Do I want someone to have sex with my wife for me? Well, I don't. So if, if not, it. then I probably should learn how to do a great job inside of my relationship rather than neglecting it. Because what I love about these three core areas of life is that they're not something that you add into your life. There are three things that are going to happen no matter yeah, what, not, right. and, and no one can do them for us, so we probably should get good at them. That's, what, that's how I look at life. When I look at business, I'm like, what are the things that I know no matter what I have to do to be successful? Not all the things to do, but what do I know no matter what I need to do? I need to have lead gen. I need to have lead nurture. I need to have conversion, something to sell someone. I need to have a deliverable, and I need to serve those people, retention, resell, upsell. I need to make sure I keep the people, resell the people, and have something to upsell the people. And I know no matter what, we'll have those things set up and streamlined, then I don't even have a business. Right. So when people are looking at all these new ways to transform their health, all these new ways to like hack their girlfriend and get in a relationship and all these new ways to do things in business, I'm like, but do you, are you doing the foundations? A lot of success is boring work. One of my friends, Alex Ramosi, went from yes. oh, zero to so big on that boring work. Yeah. It's huge on the boring work. And, and it's not that it's actually boring. It's like if you're a race That's car driver. Big. Mm-hmm. And you have to go out there and spin laps at the track to get better. The race car driver isn't bored of doing laps. But I can tell you through one, becoming a professional athlete myself, inside of motocross, I ended up going out there and, and re going after my dream of motocross at one point. Ooh. I saw people that had the talent and the capabilities to be great, yet all, they always avoided the boring work and they would just do the bare minimum to be able to get by and be a pro athlete but they had the potential to be, and it takes doing that extra repetition to be able to get there. And that's what I love about people. If you're in this group right now and you didn't have success easy, those are the people that I love because I didn't have success easy, right? I I got overweight when it was the easiest time to be skinny. People are like, well, look, of course you lost weight. You were young. I'm like, dog, I weight young too. Like that's when you're not supposed to gain weight, right? I didn't have a relationship for seven years. No girlfriend seniors couldn't get one now i'm married that's opposition could not produce more than three thousand dollars a month you know how many people out there that i know that are like wanting to give up that produced five thousand ten thousand dollars one month and then now they're having struggles i'm like dude i tried for years and i couldn't even produce over three thousand dollars in a month that's hard yet when you gain a few things which is one number one investment we can make is in here Right now, if you drop me naked in the middle of Africa, I'll come right back to where I'm at today. So freaking fast, it'll make someone's head spin. If I take a billionaire and I make him broke, he'll become a billionaire. He knows how to become a billionaire. He has it right here. The second thing was my network, the people that I was around, the surrounding, because I'll always adapt to the environment that I'm in. I made the post about the lions. Lions in the Congo compared to regular Africa are 150 pounds heavier. They, they climb trees, they swim, and they're the only pride of lions that can hunt hippos. Why? Because of the environment they're in has made them raise their level and their mm-hmm. game up. Mm-hmm. And then from there, it's like the step-by-step game plan. What's the plan that I'm taking action on? What's the skill set that I have? And if I focus on those three core areas, I'm going to accelerate and I'm going to win. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, dude, I- I'm not good. If you're not good, great. If you got success easy, awesome. Go find a great mentor. Like you're, you're one of those amazing people. For me, I didn't find it easy. That's like helping people that are struggling to go out there and freaking crush it if they just commit to doing the work. Yes, 100%. Man, I love it. Thanks for, for sharing that. I'm going to be like re-listening back to a lot of those things and like even putting them on the comments because yeah, like a lot of gold and I know that you're used to sharing your story and a lot of these things, you know, in your events and whatnot. So it's like- we're, And I put like, my money where my mouth is. Like this is Russell Brunson's inner circle. Look it up. It's 50 oh, nice. freaking grand a year for two days, two times a year. Like- I still continually practice what I preach to this day when it comes to getting around high level. It's time or money. Getting mentors takes time or money. Invest it wisely so that you go out there and get it. Don't leave it up to chance. I get guys every single day reach out. Oh, Nicholas, I don't have the money to join that. I'm like, okay, like, what are you going to do about it? 
Right. Like you want to tell me so I feel bad? Like you're going to have a victim mentality or are you going to do something about it? They right. say, I don't have the time for that. Or like, oh man, I had this bill come up and then this thing happened and then this thing happened. And the number one thing that changed my life is I remember carpet cleaning and I remember my wife going to an event that I couldn't go to. My dad got into a motorcycle accident. Oh. So he broke his uh, scapula into 32 pieces, collarbone into 16 pieces, broke his shoulder, tore his bicep tendon off, shattered all of his ribs on the left side lung road rash was out for over 12 months i was cleaning carpets at the time and the only way we could sustain the business if i continue to clean carpets full time so we could float the business float all the payments that we had all the debt that came up from all that stuff right mm -hmm. so all of a sudden my wife is like wanting to go after business wanting to make sure that she was growing because i was stuck in this like rut of feeling like i had to clean carpets every day mm -hmm. and i remember just thinking maybe one day i'll get lucky i was thinking like someday I, I should just invest in a stock and the stock will like hundred X <laughs> or maybe one day I'll win the lottery or maybe someone will give me money or maybe someone else around me will become really rich and then they'll help me out. Like I had all these weird things of fantasizing about like getting something for nothing. I remember blaming like everything that was going on in my life and other things, circumstances, the economy, people not having money. I remember my wife going to this event and she got pitched a $5,000 product. And she calls me and goes, honey, they're making me call you. I didn't want to call you because I know I need this, but there's a $5,000 thing here and I want to swipe my card and whatever. And me trust my wife. I go, absolutely go for it. And I, mm, I remember she swiped powerful. the card for five grand. I'm making 1200 bucks a month. Okay. Like this is not a way. Buying yeah. She's on a credit card. And I just remember her being so excited and that, that investment she made shifted my heart as well. Cause it got real for me real quick. Wow. Yeah. I like remember her commitment. Like you were Dude, totally it shifted me. And I remember this Amazing. thought come past me like, why, why are things not working? Why is the business not working while things selling? And I just had this like feeling go through me of like, I'm not taking responsibility. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. And it wasn't this thing of like separating it from God or like trying to take all this like burden. Mm -hmm. It was just like, I'm placed here. And if I keep putting my success on everyone else, I'm always going to fail. And mm -hmm. finally, I just started saying, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. And every morning I woke up and I said, mm -hmm. what do I to do to make progress? Because I'm going to make this thing happen. I'm not going to wait for the lottery. I'm not going to wait for my wife who's so cute that everyone should buy from because she's so hot. Let's get her a bikini and it should just make enough money. Like these were the things I'm like, how could you not buy from that? Like right. she's so <laughs> cute. At least just get all these old guys to buy programs. Who knows? <laughs> This is what I was thinking about. And yeah, as soon as I took that responsibility, all of a sudden the plans started unfolding for me. Wow. And I was just trying to help my friend out. He order of man, huge men's Facebook group. And one of his members said, oh, I wish I could join his like paid program. And mm. I said, why don't you? Oh, mm. Man, that's way too much money for me. And I was like, okay, but like, what's the upside of you joining? He goes, well, I just joined a fraternity and this is way more money than that. It's like $700 a year. And I'm like, Okay, like that right there is why you're not going to be successful. Ooh, we just broke like, that. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, like I don't get anything from this. But no matter what, like this victim mentality of like, man, yeah. I don't know if I can afford that. Cool, then don't. Go, then go do your thing. Like, go get a job. Stop doing what you're doing, or go figure it out. You telling everyone like we don't need that burden on us. Like I'm not going to take on your problem. Do you want to? My 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 mentor Cole Hatter. Sold over $150 million from stages. Who taught me as well to, to speak and sell from stage? Now we sold over a million dollars from stage. And for me, like, I, I just remember him being with the salespeople in the back room. Hopefully I'm allowed to say this, but he's with the salespeople. And he told his salespeople, and he goes, listen, this is how much money we need to close by the end of this event. And this guy's like, gets all mad, you know, like salespeople get all antsy and whatever. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, all, he's like all frustrated about it. Yeah. And so he looks at him and he goes, man, are you a Mexican? Or a Mexican. <laughs> and I just thought that was, was the funniest thing. And every time someone gives me an excuse, I always think, I'm like, can I say this? Because I don't know them, but I'm like, are you a Mexican or a Mexican? Which one yeah. are you? Because you decide if you're going to be a Mexican or a Mexican. Yeah. And <laughs> choice is up to us. But if we're, if we're going to do it, then like that's only going to hurt us. And what I found is like successful people, they don't listen to no. They just ask how, mm -hmm. right? Like they want something done and people say it's impossible. They don't go, oh, okay, it's a no then. It can't be done. They go like, oh, how can it be done? 
Absolutely. and they go out there and they figure it out. That's powerful, man. <laughs> I love that, especially because I'm actually like a Mexican, so I'm actually a Mexican. <laughs> so I know, I'll, perfect, I'll, right? I'll claim like, that. <laughs> right. So, am I allowed to say that? You know, like every single time I'm in this yeah, random Facebook no, group, and no, someone's like, good. someone's like saying excuses. I'm like, man, all I want to quote is like, this just sums it up in one sentence. It are does. you a Mexican? Yeah, no. Or are you a Mexican? <laughs> and it just clicked for me. I was like, man, like every time I have opposition, I'm like, what am I going to do? Am I going to say like, this is a no, or am I going to say how? Exactly. Awesome, man. No, I love that, bro. Yeah, we're running close in, in time here, but yeah, I just love to uh, hear just last thing of what's next for you. Like what's next and how can we support you? How can people contact you and stuff like that? For sure. We're on Facebook in a group right now. And as you know, you're part of it as well. They can come hang out with us in the Billion Dollar Brotherhood Facebook group. This is for yeah. the men only. We only work with men. We speak to men and it just makes it a place where it's like safe. The guys can talk about whatever they want. And when they don't have the judgment of an opposing sex, um, which is so funny, right? Like there's so many different men's and women's companies out there. And we've just gone out there and, and built what, the number one men men's movement for businessmen. So that's one way. But other than that, man, we have amazements coming up. We're super pumped for it. And for me, like, I'm just pumped to be able to share the message, help serve the people. If the people liked it, like get connected. If you didn't like it as well, it's awesome. So it'll be more comments on this video so that it can reach more people that would like it. So that'd be amazing as well. But dude, I really appreciate you, oh, you bringing me in and, and any other way I can serve like right here while we got three minutes left, man, I don't want to talk about what we have coming up in the future. People will find that out. They like it, man. I just want to serve like any way possible that I can to be able to help some of the members or some of the people that you have here. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, well, one of the biggest things um, that that people in this community value a lot is its mindset. And I've been trying to, um, you know, almost curate the message a, a little bit better to attract the type of people that are like, yes, you know, the money is great and whatnot. And we can talk about that in due time. But like, let's talk about the things that really transform your life and so i really appreciate you like dropping all those stories and talking all like so mindset. i got i got one then real quick for mindset while we have yeah, yeah do it so i told you that my number one mentor that i've had in my life that's helped me that was kind of like a father figure to me after i had that falling out with my dad 18 years old he made a big impression on me he was a navy seal then he was an instructor and then he's done like some private security and has also worked in hollywood so he taught like people like tom cruise how to shoot a gun he's been in 13 Hours, Transformers, Iron Man, wow. uh, American Assassin, like huge things. He's uh, John Krasinski's stunt double, and he's done some amazing things with his life. And so I, I, I was like one of those kids that was pretty flaky growing up. I wanted to act like I was doing the work, but I really didn't. So I, I tried to wrestle my first year of high school. I remember that we did the workouts every day. We had to run like three miles, and we come back and do like a full body workout. I would always fake it. But when the coaches were looking, I would push really hard. So they always thought like Nicholas always works so hard. They probably wondered why I had no stamina when we actually fought. So when I got around this guy, I started seeing like a whole different way of living. I remember one day we were working out, we were running down the street and he fell on his face. And wow. I always saw these examples of the Olympics, right? Stop, pick him up, run with him back to the place. Mm -hmm. And I tried to go over there and he's like, what are you doing? Get off me. He finished the entire workout and then he cleaned himself up. And I'm like, why did you do that? He's like, because I said I would do the workout and I wasn't done yet. And I don't want to have this thought of like, this thing is going to make me stop this. So I went out there and did it. And then it continued into the workouts. We'd make up workouts that would take like two hours, hour and 30 minutes. And I'd be like, man, I'm already an hour in. I've already got a better workout than I've ever gotten from any other workout before. And then they would continue to finish it. So I finished it. I'm like, why'd you, it's like, because I committed to do it. If I don't like it, I'll commit next time to not do it. But I already committed to it, so I'm going to follow through and then decide afterwards whether I want to make that again. And the last thing is, I remember him walking his dog once. He had this big dog and he has all these surveillance cameras at his house, right? Yeah. So he has this big dog, he's on a skateboard. And even though he's a Navy SEAL, he's not very coordinated. Sorry if he sees this. So he goes off this curb with a dog on the skateboard. And as soon as he goes off the curb, Real bites and he face plants bloody face boom i watched him on the video get up with no hesitation walk the dog around the block come back and clean himself up the definition of commitment is to do what you said you were going to do after the feeling that you set it in is gone the number one type of commitment you can have is to yourself 
see what happens is that when we made this Facebook live at a certain time, we both were accountable because we both went public and we told each other we were going to do this. So even if I didn't feel like it, I was going to show up because I don't want to look like a jerk in front of you. And you were going to show up because you don't want to look like a jerk in front of me, right? Like at the end of the day, that's the easy type of commitment when you commit to others. Right. The hardest type of commitment, the most important is the commitments we make to ourselves. This is why health is such a great discipline because nobody can stop you and no one can do it for you. See, so many people say, I'm going to work out tomorrow. I'm going to work out five days a week. First, bring that goal back because you want to start with small things so that you can actually win and build trust with yourself. Mm -hmm. So when you make a commitment, understand that when you don't follow through, your subconscious mind now is going to fight with you because now when you say, oh, I'm going to go out there and make a million dollars, your subconscious mind goes, yeah, you said that freaking last time when you said you were going to go to the gym tomorrow. Good luck. And all of a sudden we have distrust with ourselves, but we expect mm -hmm. other people to trust us. It's easy to have trust and build trust and commit and fall through for others. It's harder to do it for ourselves, yet it's more important to actually commit and follow through to ourselves so that we can build trust with ourselves so that we can actually go out there and walk in confidence. And the way that I do that is bring back the goal. Don't make commitments that you're not going to follow through on, but if you make the commitment, follow through on it and then decide afterwards if you want to make the commitment again, right? right. So if you plan a two-hour workout. You're like, I can run 50 miles today. Run the 50 miles. It doesn't matter. You break your body, good. You deserve it. That sucks. You made a crappy commitment. Decide after the 50 miles if you want to make that commitment again. Next time, you're like, I had friends tell me they're going to do 75 hard, right, with the Andy Frisilla thing. They're like, Nicholas, you want to do it? And I said, no, I don't. Mm -mm. They're like, dude, come on. Like, this is like pulling up your alley. Why aren't you doing this? Because like, I know if I'm going to do it, I'm going to actually do it. And for all you guys out there, you're going to go oh, act, drink. Oh, it's okay if I just like do it, mess up this thing, or I skip just a few times or, you know, whatever. And I'm like, no, like that's failure to me. Right. Right. So like, I don't make commitments to thing that, things that I don't want to, the things I commit to, I, I practice following through on for myself, for others. Mm -hmm. And for mindset, it's like, make that decision, go through it. And I've continually learned this from, Commitment. from these Navy SEALs and, We've had, we have the only public con CIA contract, the guys trained in CIA and MI6, the, the people that train them, we've had the only public contract to have them come in and train our guys. And then also we've done like tons of Navy SEAL days and stuff like that. So some of the best ways to be able to learn that mindset is to train the body because it's easy to be in America and not have any lack. But if you go out there and run as fast as you can for 30 seconds, you're going to feel lack really freaking quick and push through that barrier each time and you can gain massive confidence we did a workout inside of a 30 degree outdoors 40 degree water we did a pool workout with 20 guys yeah only three guys finished i believe one of them was the navy and it was just so interesting because no matter what this is what's impressive we don't make fun of the people quit because there's other people that never showed up navy seals respect Everyone who shows up to Buds. Why? Because they actually showed up. Right. There's plenty of other people that are sleeping in their beds that never showed up. Even though they failed, they went and they showed up. Right. 17 out of 20 of those guys failed in the swimming pool. Yet, the Navy SEAL didn't make fun of them because they all jumped in and they all did their very best, their even best. though three made it. He's the people that I'd go to war with are not the people that didn't show up. I'd go to war with the people that did show up, whether they finish or not, because at least I know that when things are hard, they're not going to avoid them and go try to sleep in the warm bed. Mm, powerful, man. Thank you so much for that, for sharing that. That is, that is massive. The commitment, right? Like commitment. Like if, if we only had like that solid, unshakable commitment every single day, it's like, we could achieve anything we want in our lives. Like most of the problem happened because we say, oh, we're going to do this and then we don't do it. And that, and Dog, that's check out the formula that. real quick. Do you have one minute for this formula? I do. I do. Cool. So this is the formula. You get excited, right? Like something you're super pumped about business, mm -hmm. health, life, New Year's resolution, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Right. You're mm -hmm. in the height of excitement. Mm -hmm. That is the perfect time to make a good commitment. Not a bad commitment, not like gambling or like doing something stupid. Mm -hmm. But this is the time to make a decision. But realize that it's a lot easier to make a decision while you're comfortable and then have to follow through with it later. So like realize that, you know, if you're sitting there and you're like, I'm going to go swim in this really cold pool, 
you probably wouldn't talk about that when you're actually cold. But when you're all warm in the bed and you're like, you know what, <laughs> I'm going to do that pool workout tomorrow. <laughs> but when you're in that height of emotion, that's when you want to make that powerful commitment. Why? So that when you don't feel like it anymore, you still follow through. This is why when I tell people that come to BDB Live, our, our live events, I say grab a ticket while you're excited so that you don't just procrastinate and then life gets in the way and then you never show up. Buy a ticket when you know this is where you need to be and then that way that when you don't feel like coming anymore because life gets hard, you have a commitment that's holding you to actually going. Mm -hmm. Tony Robbins says make commitments while you're in state so that when you're out of state, you stay committed to the thing that you made in state. So yes. first you make the commitment mm -hmm. while you're in state. And then you're out of state, right? So mm -hmm. at some point, we're going to get out of state. This yeah. is where we lose the motivation, the excitement. This is where commitment comes in. Doing what you said you're going to do after the feeling you set it in is gone. Mm -hmm. Why do we have that? Because what happens is the commitment gets us to continue doing it. And let's say it's go to the gym. How many people do you know that go to the gym and leave the gym and go, that totally wasn't worth it? It never happens. <laughs> it never happens. Exactly. So let's go with a short one rather than like a live event that's like six months away. Let's say a gym. I made a commitment to go to the gym. I'm excited. Now all of a sudden I'm not excited anymore. So I have to right. use my commitment. I have to flex that muscle. There's no reason to have the word commitment in the world unless we're going to use it when we don't feel like it. You don't need right. commitment when you have excitement. When you feel it. Exactly. So all the, now I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm going to go to the gym. So we go to the gym and what do we get? We get the results that we want. And on top of that, then the feeling comes in a greater measure, right? That excitement that we have. At some point, we're going to break that lull and we're going to be happy because we made massive progress because of commitment. And now we get to experience another level of excitement. And then we get to make a new commitment. Mm -hmm. So I, I make the commitment. I use that commitment. Uh, I do it at the height of emotion. I use commitment to keep me through the lull times, the commitments mm -hmm. that I made. I stay true to them because I made them muscle. for a reason. Exactly. I was in a full state. Yeah. Trusting and your then former all of a sudden, self. When I get the results, dude, let's say, let's say in my business, I do something really hard and it's really hard and I don't want to do it. And then a million dollars, I'm like, oh, that felt good. Mm -hmm. Like I get to reap the reward and I get the feeling again. Mm -hmm. And then I make, an I make another commitment there. Most people, they never flex the commitment, the discipline. And then all of a sudden, they never get the results. It's the same thing in relationships. Mm -hmm. How it works in relationships is you have a conflict. You're in love, but you have a conflict. And then the commitment gets you to communicate. On the other side of communicating, you get to know each other more. And on the other side of knowing each other more, you get to love each other deeper because you can only love yes. something deeper if you have more knowledge about it. Yes. And so, like, most yeah, it's people, like, it's they, like get a a, yeah. they get, most people get into a fight they don't have a lot of commitment in the relationship, so they never communicate. And so then it just builds up in this tension and it gets worse and worse and worse. But actually, if you have commitment, then you can get into a conflict. It will bring you through it. You'll actually communicate. You'll get over it. You'll know each other better. You'll experience more love. And boom, you get that like feeling again so that it can sustain you, make another commitment in that relationship. Same exact thing. So I just believe like it's not like you have the discipline and it sucks. Now right. you're fit. And you go to the beach and you feel freaking amazing. You're like, I'm so glad like, that I actually followed through on that. Now I'm pumped. I'm going to make a new commitment and declaration to myself again. Exactly. No, I love it. That, that's so powerful. Like Specifically, as you mentioned, on doing it in that high state and, like, totally. and, and, and becoming totally. aware of it. And like, be, like actually becoming aware of that process. And don't yeah. make decisions while you're in a crappy state. Yes. I see people from like buy lack other people's scarcity, yeah. programs that are, they're, they're, they buy a program because they're pumped. Then life hits them in their face and they're like, you know what? I think I'm going to drop out of this person's program. I don't think I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. no, no, no. It's more valuable to you for the long term of your life, even if you never participate, to follow through on what you said you were going to do. Yes. Because right now you're making a decision in a low state. And if you always sabotage, the decisions you made in a high state when you're in a low state, you're always going to live at this level, right? Yeah, you're not training your body. This is like the people. In this, this is the person that buys Bitcoin at 20000 and then it goes down and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm freaking to sell it, right? right? That's what 97% of people do. But 97% of people at the age of 65 are either dead or dead broke relying on their friends, family, and government for their main source of income. Right. That's what 97% of people do. The 3% do exactly what we just talked about. That's who everyone on this Facebook Live is. Cool. Amazing, brother. 
Thank you so much, man. Um, honestly, you've dropped so much value. It's been one of the, my most favorite lives ever. And yeah, man, just thank you so much for taking the time to drop like your stories and your mindset. And like, I'm going to be personally going through some of the things that you said about the business and the upsells, like just the way you structure it, just so simple, so clear. And yeah, man, I can't thank you enough. So yeah, brother, any, any last words you, you, you have for the audience or anything else before we go? No, I mean, I really appreciate it. I appreciate putting the whole group together, creating those moments that can be defining like we talked about before and, and giving the opportunity to get the message out there. It's awesome, man. Thanks so much. Awesome. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, just leave your comments, um, any questions that you might have. Go join his tribe. You're a man that wants to up level in your life, in your business, in your relationships, in your health. Like, just go ahead and do it because like he that's one of the best decisions. And tune out everyone else because that's the thing too. It's like just if you're gonna follow Nicholas, follow him and do it up, guys. So, anyways, talk to you guys soon and take it easy. Boom. Awesome, brother. Thank you so much, my man. I know you stay a couple more minutes, but yeah, bro, like really appreciate you. And uh, yeah, man, like this is kind of like a, you know, almost like, you know, deja vu with like epiphanies kind of coming through for me because of the timing and all the, my own little uh, revelations I've had and whatnot. So yeah, man. Yeah, so, let me know about your live event and how we can help out and everything. Yeah, I'll definitely be talking to you a bit more about that and like just see how we can do it because um, yeah, man. And the last thing though, I'll leave you with something that God's put in my heart to tell you and some of the you know, top people. And in time, everything will be revealed. But for now, just write down the scripture of John 14, verse 12. Meditate on it. See what the Lord says about it. But we're heading into a complete new generation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let me just write it down real quick. Yeah. Well, I'll remember it because I, yeah. Yeah. God's going to be doing some insane stuff, bro. Um, but yeah, I, I love to to see what God tells you about it, you know, in due time. Sweet, man. I appreciate it. Thanks so much again. Yeah, man. Take it easy, brother. Say hi to your wife and we'll talk soon, bro. See ya.